Hey guys, it's Matt with My Designs here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to edit collection templates. So let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is navigate to the listings tab that's located right underneath dashboard here and click into that. As you can see, I'm already inside of a collection. Um, I'm going to be using this one as an example to show you how to edit templates. Um, as you can see, we have a title field, a tags field, and a description field that is here by default. Uh, this is exactly what you would need for Etsy, which is currently our only marketplace that we support. What I'm going to do today in this video is show you how you can set this template up for any marketplace that you need. And I'm going to be using Merch by Amazon as an example. I do want to point out what we call everything before we get started. So this is the listings tab you can see here. You can really name these anything you want. Um, we have it as listing, inventory and pricing and keywords. These are called data sets and these are called fields, title field, tax field and description field. And these that are located right underneath the design where you see mock-up one, two, and three, these are called file slots. This is where you can put your print files, uh, your mock-ups, and anything like that. In order to edit any template, we just navigate to the top right corner of the web page here, the button right next to publish template. So we'll, we click into this here. This is how we edit our template. As you can see, we have our data sets here, our fields here, and our file slots down here. When we're creating new fields, we can change the name of the field here. The field type, we have four different ones. There's text, text area, tags, and number. Text would be for anything that's short, like a title. Um, text area is for longer text, like a description. Tags is for a tags field, and numbers would be for your pricing. We can edit any field by going to the edit field button located here and we can change the name of any of our file slots by just clicking on the name and then changing the name and clicking update slot we also allow you to save your own templates um, so that you can easily apply them to other collections um, you can load templates by clicking the button here we have some pre-saved uh, templates and then if you ever save your own templates those would also appear here as well now, just so I can show an example, I'll show you how to delete a field and create a new one. So what we're going to do is delete the title field here, and we can do that by clicking this X button. It's going to ask us if we really want to delete it. I'll click yes. Now I'll just create another field and I'll name it the exact same thing. Title, the field type is going to be text. Maximum number of characters is 120 and then we'll click create field. So you can set up these um, fields however you would like. I personally like to set them up how the actual website that I'm uploading designs to sets them up. So in this case, I'm going to set it up for Merch by Amazon. And I believe the title is going to be the first thing that is listed here. And I do want to point out as well that we have three columns that you can use. You don't have to use all three, but it is an option if you would like to. So since Merch by Amazon doesn't require tags or doesn't have a tags field, we're just going to go ahead and delete this tags field. Next, we're going to add the brand name, which uh, Merch by Amazon has. And I believe that it has a maximum character of 50. And the field type is once again going to be text. So once we have that, we'll just click create field. And as you can see, it's added there. Next, we're going to add bullet one and I believe it's 256 characters for this. And then we'll click create field and then we'll do bullet two, same thing, 256 characters and create field. So now that we have all of the fields that Merch by Amazon requires, we'll go ahead and rearrange these um, in the order that they have it on Merch by Amazon. I believe the way that it's arranged there would put the title and brand here and then it would be bullet one here, bullet two, and then a description underneath. So I believe that's the exact way that Merch by Amazon has it set up. And that's what I prefer to do as well. So now that we have the template set up just how we want it to, all we have to do now is go to the top right corner here and click save. 
Now there's two save options here. As you can see, there's update template only and update template and designs. The reason we have recommended on this is because it won't erase any data. If you update your template and designs with the values, this will delete all of your data if you have any um, any designs that have everything filled out, just be careful there and make sure that you only update the template. So now, as you can see, it's updated our entire template. If we had, um, you know, a hundred designs in here, it would have done it for everything. It's applied across the entire template. So just like that, we have it set up for Merch by Amazon. Next, I want to show you how to add additional file slots. So we'll go back to our template here. Now you can create new file slots like I mentioned earlier here under add file slots. Um, for this example, I'm going to create a file slot and I'm going to name it mug print file and then I'll hit create slot. Now, if we want to move these around to have them in different orders, then we can do it like that. I personally like to have my print files up front and then my mockups after that. So that is how we create additional file slots for anything that we might need. Um, another example would be maybe we had a color chart. So we could create a new uh, color chart and maybe this one is for t-shirts. So we could do t-shirts, color chart and click add or create file slot. So now we have that there. The other thing I want to touch base on is you can actually add text to your template. Um, so if we had a generic description that we had, you know, applied to every one of our listings on Etsy or Amazon or whatever marketplace we're selling on, we could come in here and I'm just going to say this is a test description and write it in like that. So once that's there, if we click save and then update the template only, click update. This applies it across our entire um, template. As you can see, it did not add the data in, but when I add a new design into this collection is going to add the data in. Um, if I wanted to add the data to the current designs I have here, I have to go back and I believe I have to save it with the design values as well. So once I click that, you'll see it just updated. This is a test description, and that is in every description field for every single design that we have inside of this collection. And I do want to touch base just a little further on that and show you some of the other cool things that you can do. So we're going to go back into the template here, and I'm going to show you that we can actually use variables too. So variables are used in a way that we first mention the data set, and then we put a period and then we mention the title field that we want it to pull from. So for this variable, I'm going to pull from the keywords data set, which is here. And then I'm going to put a period. And if I click over here, you'll see I have it named primary keyword. So it's going to be keywords dot primary keyword like that. And then we close the bracket. And just like that, we have a variable inside of our template. Um, this can be very useful for a lot of things. Um, so I'll go ahead and click save here. And once again, I'm going to update the design values so that it applies it to the current ones I already have. So as you can see there, we just added a variable on a template level now. So what that means is that if we had, you know, a hundred designs in here, all we would have to do is go select them all. We could go to more actions, edit in bulk. And then what I'm going to do here is add to that primary keyword field, which is where my variable is pulling from. I'll add to the front and I'm actually going to add another variable here. And this time I'm going to pull the file name of this actual design. So you'll see there, yeah, the only way to do this is inside of bulk edit here and you click the add variable button down here. It gives you a preview here. And so the adventure begins. I personally like to name all of my designs what my primary keywords are going to be. So once I have that done, I'll just click apply to the selected listings. And now you can see, and so the adventure begins. Camp hair don't care. If I go into the keywords field, that's where it's added. So that is very powerful to use on a template level if you plan on using keywords, which most people will for every single listing. The last thing that I want to show you is how to actually save templates that you create. So let's say we really like this template we just made. All we have to do is go back into the template and then we come up here. Uh, you see this button save as private. If we click this, 
we it pulls up save template as so this is how we can save it and this one i would just name merch by amazon as that's what the template's set up for you can write a description if you would like as you can see it says optional this is for my merch by amazon designs and then we can click save template and then just like that now once we go to load templates you'll see at the very top there merch by amazon this is for my merch by Amazon designs. If we ever wanted to install this on a different collection, all we would have to do is go into that collection, edit the template, and then come down here and click that install button. And it would apply it across the entire collection. So that does it for this video on how to edit collection templates. I hope everything made sense. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure that you um, subscribe to our YouTube channel for further My Designs content.